Welcome Life Fellowship Church to our New Year's online service. Welcome to 2021. We are so glad that you are here with us this weekend. And uh, we're so excited about this new year and what's coming up. We're excited about everything that God has in store, not just for us as a church, but for you and for your family. And um, for the next few moments, we're gonna sing a few songs and we're gonna hear a very encouraging message from Pastor Patrick. But right now, maybe you have a need in your life. You know, sometime between now and throughout this service at the end, you wanna pray about that. You wanna speak to one of our online prayer partners down at the bottom. If you'll just click the prayer tab, we have people ready to pray for you live all throughout this service. So make sure you do that. And also right now, wherever you're watching from, I want you to pause. Maybe you're, uh, you're in your living room, maybe you're in the kitchen, maybe you're sitting on the couch. Just pause for a second. And don't think about the rest of this day. Don't think about the rest of this week or not even the rest of this year for sure. I want you to pause right now in this moment and think about this moment. Think about Jesus and put your focus on him and what he wants to say to you throughout this service. Because I believe this, God wants to say something to you. You're not watching this video. You're not a part of this service by accident. God wants to speak to you this weekend. So this very first song we're going to sing is called My Testimony. We're going to be singing about new life. And I want this truth to become alive in your hearts and your minds this weekend. As we sing these together, I want it to come alive. So if you've seen these songs, wherever you're watching from, sing out loud and let's sing together right now about our testimony. I saw Satan fall like lightning. I saw darkness run for cover.
I search the world But it couldn't feel me Men's empty praise And treasures of faith Are never enough, no And then you came along Now satisfied
everybody and welcome to 2021. Wow, isn't that amazing? Just say that right now wherever you are, 2021, ready? Isn't that fun? Doesn't it sound great? In fact, I think it sounds and feels more special and more significant than even moving from 1999 to the year 2000. And in part because we're moving out of a year that many of us would rather forget, but we're also moving into a year that will probably prove to be as unforgettable, even though we don't know why or how. All we know is that things have changed so drastically in 2020 that 2021 is uncharted territory. We don't know what to expect. We don't know what to expect from uh, the economy, from the government. We don't really know what to expect in terms of the way we interact with one another or the way that our kids even engage school. We just don't know what to expect in 2021. So how do you then determine what the vision for 2021 in your life should be when you've come out of a year that's so disrupted, a year that is so unprecedented? How do you then have any context for vision for the year that's to come? Well, I want to talk about that over the next few moments, but uh, I want to share with you a story uh, that I might have shared before about Lewis and Clark, the famed American explorers who back in 1804 set out from St. Louis, Missouri on the Mississippi River in order to find a water route, hopefully to the Pacific Ocean. They were commissioned by the president, Thomas Jefferson at the time, who contended that if we can find a water route from Mississippi or the, the Mississippi River to the Pacific Ocean, then America can own the trade routes and probably the resources of this vast new continent. And so they, they went through the newly purchased Louisiana Purchase and they got to uh, probably yards away from a peak and and from really a territory that no white-skinned European had ever seen. It was the Great Northwest Passage. And as they, they traversed up this little rise to see the Great Northwest Passage, they had the assumption that everything they were about to see looked exactly the same as everything they had already seen. That the geography and the terrain of west and where they were going was just like where they had been in the east. But as they crested that little hill and they looked out, they saw mountain peak after mountain peak. They saw the great Rocky Mountains instead of this nice little trail that led to the Columbia River that would swiftly take them away to the Pacific Ocean. Everything about their assumptions on this trip had changed. They had expected to traverse this entire journey by boat. But now all of a sudden, the terrain had shifted and things had changed. And you know what? Moving into 2021, maybe you feel like Lewis and Clark. You think that everything ahead of you is so much different than that which is behind me. How in the world can I really understand or have a personal vision for my life in the year to come when the year that I've come out of is so tumultuous, it was so disruptive, and things have shifted? Think about it how much, how vast, and how rapid change came because of a virus and the way that our culture and all of mankind reacted to the virus. Things shifted in a seismic manner. So how do we have vision for the year to come? Let me share with you three things that I believe you and I can do as Christ followers, and you can follow along with me there. Uh, we'll have some notes at the bottom. The first thing I would encourage you to do this year as we move into 2021 is focus on Christ, not the crisis. You know, there's a lot of crisis going on. In fact, it seems like we go from one crisis to the other. You get an alert on your phone from a news app that you got that tells you about the latest crisis. You got social media out there that's very eager to tell you about how bad things are. If you don't get it from social media, you get it from the popular media. It's crisis after crisis. And and we can't avoid those things. You can't go hide in a hole. Uh, the larger culture is owned by the crisis, but it doesn't have to own you. In fact, let me share with you three things that you need to remember during this season as it pertains to crisis. First of all, is that crisis will pass, but Christ will not. Christ is forever, but crisis will pass. They, they come and they go. They're attached to time, and time doesn't last forever. They're attached to the finite. But Christ is eternal, and Christ is infinite. So you have a decision to make. How much of your time, your energy, and your effort are you going to pour into chasing crisis after crisis? How far are you going to journey down that path? Or are you going to focus on Christ in this season? Because Christ is eternal, 
And all these other things are going to pass. Here's another thing you need to know about crisis. Crisis demands our attention, but Christ calls us to be still and know that He is God. Crisis demands our attention. Have you ever noticed that crisis always comes with an exclamation point and bolded emphasis? It's always yelling in your ear. It demands immediate attention. And you can give your attention to it. And you can chase that. And you can let it own you. Or you can be still and know that He is God. And that He is God, not when the crisis is over, but He is God before and during the crisis as well. But you know what you and I need to do in the midst of all the crises that are going on? We need to be still and know. We need to recenter ourselves and reprioritize what's most important in life. Here's the third thing you need to know about crisis is that crisis drains our energy and our hope. But Christ is the fuel of life. Christ really is the fuel of life. You know how it is. Crises will drain the life out of you. They own you. They take you away from the important and make you a slave to the urgent before you even know it. And uh, you're wrapped up, not just your time, but your attention, your emotional energy. They drain it all out of you. But Christ is the fuel of life. In fact, uh, the Bible says in John 1, sort of the Christmas story that John writes, is that Christ is the light of the world and His light was the life of men. So literally, it's Christ who fuels our life, and you have a choice. You see, you don't have a choice about the circumstances that come into your life, and I get it. We don't have a choice about certain uh, things that go on in the world, but one thing we do have a choice, we have a choice about what we focus on. And so I want to encourage you, focus on Christ, not the crisis. Philippians chapter 3 says it this way, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do... Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. This is from Paul to the church at Philippi. They were going through a crisis and he says, listen, I I just focus on one thing. I don't focus on the past. I focus on what is ahead of me. And that is the goal that God has made for me in Christ Jesus. And I will reach that goal. And here's the promise if you focus on Christ from Isaiah chapter 26, verse 30 or verse 3. This is the promise to you from God that he will keep in perfect peace those whose mind is stayed on him. That's a promise from God. The second thing I want you to think about as we go into 2021 is to be prepared to start over. You know, Lewis and Clark had to start over on their journey. When they crested that hill and they looked and they saw the mountains, they had to be willing to make a seismic shift in their mindset. Their mind had to change about what the future held. In fact, they had to literally deconstruct their canoes and and make snow skis and poles and, and sleds so they could traverse the mountains. And you know what? If we're going to go into 2021 and get everything God has for us and see a vision come to pass, we're going to have to be prepared to change as well, to change our mindsets, to start over again. And and that starts with changing the way you think. We have to change the way we think about things. And it's more than just saying, oh, I'm going to make lemonade out of lemons. No, it's more than that. There are going to be times in your life where you're going to have to deconstruct the canoes that have brought you from where you were to where you are today. You're going to have to strip them down and you're going to have to make them into tools for the future. You're going to have to recognize that the tools and the equipment and the assumptions you made about the future may be wrong, just like Lewis and Clark did. And you're going to have to make some adjustments at that point because change is more than just cliches. If you're going to make change, you're going to have to have a conviction. And here's a conviction I want you to really have as we move into 2021. And that is, what really matters? What is your values focused on? People are the only thing that lasts. And as we think about change in the future, don't get caught up in all the little things that are changing. Focus on people that are the only things that last in 2021. And finally, I want to share with you that We need to anchor ourselves to those things that must never change. So number one, focus on Christ, not the crisis. Number two, be prepared to start over. Number three, anchor yourself to those things that must not change. You know, there are certain things that can't change in the midst of a changing world. Certain things for you and I as Christ followers that we must anchor ourselves to. 
This was similar to what was going on in the first century church as they had just been through a tumultuous time. There was a lot of persecution. The young church was learning how to get its bearings and was really starting to be formed during this time. And even the doctrines and the understanding of who Jesus was and, and the church and the formation of the church was all new. And so Paul wrote to them in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 14. He says, listen, Christ himself has given the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. And then verse 14 says, We will no longer be like infants tossed back and forth by waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people in their deceitful scheming. Now, you have to have these passages together. A lot of times we read 11 through 13, but we don't read 14. 14 is a warning. And it basically assumes that many of the Christ followers that Paul was talking to were infants and were being tossed back and forth by every wind of doctrine. You know, right now with the Internet and with the availability that we have to so much teaching, some of it good, some of it not so good. It's very easy for us to lose our focus and to be blown about as well and not anchored. But here's what Paul is teaching, and these are the two points I want you to see. There's certain things that cannot change as we move forward in a very turbulent new year 2021. First is anchor yourself in his body. That is the body of Christ. That is the church. I can't imagine what people who have COVID and, and are in a hospital by themselves and their family maybe in a, and lives in another state and they can't. I don't, I don't know how people do it without the body of Christ. But in the same way, I don't know how you're going to grow. I don't know how you're going to develop spiritually. I don't know how you're going to get through crisis and mountaintops that you haven't even seen yet in 2021 without the body of Christ. It's where we form relationships. It's where we grow spiritually. It's where we find purpose for our life. So I'd encourage you in 2021, there's a lot of changes that are coming and a lot of things that have already began to shift maybe in your life, please anchor yourself to the body of Christ. It's going to be more important in the days ahead than ever before. The second thing we need to anchor ourselves to is His Word. He, he, he talks about here, until we reach unity of the faith and knowledge of the Son of God and become mature. Those things happen by you getting in the Word of God. And I want to tell you something. Don't mistake a changing world for the unchanging Word of God. The Bible says in Hebrews 13, 8, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I'm so excited about 2021. And next weekend, I want you to be here to hear the theme and the vision of this new year as Life Fellowship prepares to do the things we talked about, focus on Christ, not the crisis. We're prepared to start over in areas where we need to. And we're going to be anchoring ourselves to those things that must never change. And we want you to be a part of this journey. 2021, we're going to be serving, giving, sharing, loving, caring in ways like we never have before. We're going to be pioneering new ministries, partnering with new churches. And we want you to be a part of what God is doing in 2021. We're starting this next weekend, January the 9th and the 10th. We want you to be a part of one of our online or our in-person gatherings as we share a brand new series called Compelled. We look forward to journeying with you in 2021 and beyond. I can't think of a better way to start off this new year than accept those challenges, to stay anchored to the body of Christ and to stay anchored to God's word. And as we as a church, we wanna help you do that. We wanna help you stay anchored. We wanna help you stay connected. We wanna help you take any kind of next steps for you to grow in your walk with Christ. So right now, we can help you by, if you'll text LF Church to 94,000, it's all one word, LF Church to 94,000. You just simply let us know, I wanna to speak to a leader, or I want you to help me pray for this, or I wanna take water baptism as my next step. Whatever that may be, you can do that by texting that. And also, if you need prayer for anything right now, you can click the prayer tab down below. And we have people right now, here in this moment, who wanna pray for you. I wanna tell you about two quick things that you can stay connected between now and leading into the new year. One is if you don't currently have our Life Fellowship app, 
Download the Life Fellowship app from whatever app store that you use. From there, you can watch previous online messages. You can stay up to date with everything happening, all of our current series and what's going on. So make sure you download the Life Fellowship app. And also, next weekend, January 9th and 10th, we are back together with in-person services and we are very excited about that. So our South Haven and Hernando campus will meet here at our South Haven campus Saturday at 6 and Sunday 9 and 11 and Olive Branch will be Sunday 9 and 11 and all of, everyone from our West campus you guys will be meeting in our Dream Center your first meeting there preparing for our Dream Center launch coming up here in just a few weeks you're gonna be hearing more and more about that so many exciting things happening at our church in this new year that we can't wait and wait to experience together but right now I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I want to pray for all of us and pray for this new year as we walk into everything that God has for us. So let's close our eyes and let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this year, Father God. We are grateful, God. We are grateful for every single thing that we have in you. God, every blessing. God, help us to take not one thing for granted, Father. God, I pray for every single person that's hearing my voice right now. God, those who are full of hope, God, and those who are searching for hope, Father, I pray for those who are searching, I pray that they will find it in this new year and they'll walk in victory, they'll walk in peace and they'll walk in joy, Father. God, I pray for those who have hope, God, I pray that they share it with a new passion with every single person they come in contact with, God, whether they're on a church building or they're at their work or at their school, wherever they find themselves, God, I pray that they share and all of us share the hope of Jesus Christ everywhere we go, Father. We're thankful for this time together. We look forward to what you have for us as a church and for every person and every family. God, we cannot wait for this new year, Jesus. God, we ask these things in your precious name. Amen. We can't wait to see you on campus next weekend. Have an amazing week.